Let's see how we can read uh, CSV data from a local directory, send it to S3, and then trigger a notebook job in Databricks. So this is the standard uh, taxi tutorial pipeline. And as described in the blog entry, I've replaced the Hadoop file system destination with S3 and added this Spark executor. Now, if we uh, just reset the pipeline here, and uh, just do a quick preview. I can look at the actual data. Now, if you've run the um, tutorial already, you'll be quite familiar with this, but we've basically got um, incoming records with credit card numbers and transactions amount, amounts for New York City taxi rides. And in the pipeline, one of the key things we do is uh, compute the uh, credit card type uh, down here, so it's, this one starts with four, so it's Visa, and let's have a look at another one. This one starts with five one, so it's a Mastercard, and then we mask the credit card number because that doesn't need to go to uh, the analysis uh, platform, which in this case is uh, Databricks. So we end up sending this data with uh, masked credit card numbers and credit card types off into S3. So what I've got is um, a Databricks notebook set up. And what it's going to do is um, it's going to mount uh, an S the S3 bucket, so the place we're writing the data. And it's going to read in that data and do a couple of visualizations. The first one, it's going to show the transaction counts by credit card type. So how many Visa transactions, how many MasterCard, and so on. And then the second one, it's going to do the same thing, essentially the same, but it's going to show the average uh, total transaction amount per credit card type. And then at the top here, I've got these, uh, what uh, Datapricks calls widgets. And this is really the parameters for the notebook that I'm setting in uh, the pipeline. So here I'm writing to uh, an S3 bucket. So I've got my... Um, S3 credentials here, and the region and the bucket and everything. And then over here, uh, I've set up for this job, I've set up the AWS access key and secret key. And then uh, these are coming from the same runtime resources, but I load them for the, uh, for the S3 destination. And then the bucket and the object key are sent by this event. So I've configured the S3 destination to uh, send, um, to produce events. So the event it's going to produce when it's uh, finished up writing the object just contains the object's uh, bucket and key. So it's taken me a lot longer to explain it than it's going to take to run it. So let's fire away. So it just takes a few seconds to read in those uh, 5,000 records. And um, oh, there it is. So it should have sent something to S3. So let's go over there, just refresh here. So we can see I changed the batch size to 10,000 so I could fit all those uh, 5,000 odd records into a single um, uh, S3 object there. So we go over to the uh, job page here. We can see that the job is now active. So if we click in there, we can see that it's currently mounting the uh, S3 bucket. So uh, that should take, uh, that just takes a few seconds because it actually mounts it for the whole cluster. Okay, and once the uh, S3 buckets mounted, these uh, analyses happen pretty quickly. Oh, there we go. So we can see here the uh, overwhelming majority of transactions are Visa, um, 1,275, and then we've got 796 MasterCard and so on. And if we go down, we can see uh, transaction amounts are pretty similar. Diners Club, the average transaction is 1,458. And then JCB, it's quite a lot higher at 25, 28. So make of that uh, what you will. But there you go. So um, this, these results are stored as the output. This is the third time I've uh, 
run this job. And uh, if you were to drop um, more CSV files into the directory that the pipeline's pointing at, you would uh, you'd see this notebook being run again and again, and you would have different uh, results here. So fun with uh, Streetsets Data Collector and Databricks. Thanks for watching.